Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Working with Upset Customers. My name is Charlotte, and I'll be hosting today's webinar. Today's session will run for approximately 30 minutes, with time for questions at the end. Questions can be submitted at any time in the question box on the webinar's control panel. I will now hand you over to our training, uh, one of our national training specialists here at Reckon, Andrea Suarez. Thank you, Charlotte, and thank you everyone for joining me for today's webinar, um, which is Working with Upset Customers. So basically today, um, we'll go through an overview, uh, just a basic overview of working with upset customers, the customer service mindset, applying what we call the diffuse method, which I'll go through in a moment, and tips on useful phrases. So something that's happened to us all, the case of that angry customer, wherever we work or whatever we do, we'll all eventually find ourselves either face to face or over the phone um, in that particular awkward situation that we'd rather simply avoid. And let's face it, people do get quite upset or angry all the time. So customers or clients can become quite rude or angry for a number of reasons. Some can perfectly be justified and others completely the opposite. So keeping customers on our side is often easier said than done. And demonstrating those valuable soft skills to diffuse heated situations can actually make a difference. How you respond can really be the difference between a customer who feels satisfied and otherwise a result that can tarnish your business and just spread unwelcome negativity. So knowing how to handle the heat of the situation is a skill worth learning. So many of us have to deal with angry or unhappy clients as part of our roles. And to be quite honest, it's never easy. So whatever we say, and more importantly, how we say it, can actually help the situation. So in fact, we might even end up with a better relationship with our clients than what we had before. So the first point I said was the customer service mindset. So what does that actually mean? It actually means to deliver exceptional customer service. So that's actually following, you know, um, usually your company will set out a bunch of rules, how they want a their customer service to be like. And sometimes it's not enough. So instead of rules, you actually need to adopt an attitude or a mindset that satisfying the customer is your number one goal. If you do adopt a customer service mindset and you actually recognize the importance of that mindset to your company, to your job and your job satisfaction, then it actually can help you um, the way to success. So truly great customer service is built on your genuine desire to please and satisfy the customer. So it can actually help you the way you respond to your upset customers. So to put into perspective, I actually came up with this, I didn't come up with it personally, but I did find this meme. So this meme says what I think I do, what my parents think I do, what my friends think I do, what society thinks I do, what customers think I do, and what I really do. So I, I know that for a customer service role, they do work very hard and it's hard for an upset customer to see it that way. That's why I put that little animation of the magician because you know sometimes um, their expectations can be um, unrealistic, but if you do adopt that customer service mindset, then that should help you um, satisfy your customers um, when they're upset. Okay, so how to deal with um, upset customers. So angry customers are one of the biggest challenges in the customer service industry. These frustrated individuals can ruin your day um, even for your other staff who are customer service representatives. It's particularly if you aren't aware of how to handle um, complaints competently. So the first step in resolving a difficult situation is what we call the diffuse method. 
So the diffuse method, um, it's a way to diffuse the customer's anger so they're ready to listen to your solution. So this diffuse method can help you um, take the wind out of an angry customer sale and it can help you uncover the problem and identify a solution. So let's get into the diffuse method. Okay, so the diffuse method. So D, so don't lose your cool or take things personally. So this is an important point. So you've got to realize that um, the customer who is frustrated, it's not, they're not taking their fresh, sorry, they're not frustrated with you as such. They're probably frustrated with themselves or the product or service that they received from your company. And I guess, you know, you've got to realize that you're only doing your best to help them and you need to keep your emotions in check. So this is actually very challenging, um, especially when um, a customer can be quite aggressive. So definitely don't lose your cool and um, use positive language, body language if you are face to face um, and a positive tone as well if you are um, over the phone. Okay, so the next part is E, encourage communication. So that's basically, you know, listen to your client and let them vent their frustration. Make sure you're not interrupting them when they are telling you about the issue um, with the product or service that your company has. So I guess this is um, quite an important point because listening is just not hearing the customer, but it's, you know, trying to understand the problem um, so you're just not, um, so sorry, so they can, um, realize that you are trying to help them. F, focus on feelings. So use empathy, apologize if it is appropriate, and then build back that rapport and trust and, you know, connect in some way. So think about it. If you put it into the customer's shoes. Think about a time when you were frustrated um, at a particular bit, like com company. You know, um, I have come across a sales rep where they did it so well, where they just were like, oh no, that's, you know, that's not good to hear. You know, that's a bit frustrating. Um, so just connect in some way so that they know that you're trying to be on the same wavelength. Okay, you, unfather, uncover the facts. So that's basically finding out what the issue is. So ask open-ended questions. Avoid jargon that you use in your company. Um, I have in the past accidentally used jargon where the customer gets more frustrated when you are using, um, I don't know, acronyms as such. And when you are uncovering the facts, just repeat the problem just to cl clarify um, that you understand what the issue is. And then once you've done that, S is suggest a solution. So keep the customer involved when you are um, finding a, a solution to their problem. Let them know what you're going to do and ensure that you don't offer a solution that you can't provide. And then E, end positively. So Make sure your customer understands the action plan you're going to take. Clarify any points that you um, that the customer may have. Um, in a sorry, in a company that I used to work for, we used this um, tofu method where it's taking ownership and following up. So once you've you know um, clarified what the problem is, offered a solution, follow up with the customer to make sure that they're happy with the suggested solution. And always ask for their feedback as well. So this can, you know, provide improvement in your company as well. And lastly, don't forget to thank them. So they are the customer. So make sure you thank your customer. So a good thing is well, like, um, yeah, use this diffuse method. You can just print this particular page out and have it in front of you um, whenever there is a frustrating situation that you may have. So what kind of methods do you use when you deal with an upset customer? So 
after with um sorry when I have suggested that diffuse method it's also understanding what type of upset customers there are so understanding the type of upset customers there are is it's just allowing you to um, find a particular solution not it's just not that um, easy to just respond generically sometimes you need to tweak your solution for the customer um, depending on what type of anger they're in I guess um, I know it's not really categorizing the customer but it's just knowing how to, to respond to each customer so the types of upset customers there are so we have the steam blower so what type of customer is that these type of customers just want to complain and blow off steam to someone accountable now how would you deal with this particular customer I guess it's just ensuring that you are listening you need to be sympathetic and just let them vent out their frustration make sure that you're repeating back their issue just to clarify that you understand their concern and just offer ways to rectify the situation okay so we have the aggressive complainer so what type of customer is this Aggressive customers just won't hold back with their dissatisfaction. Um, they can be quite boisterous and very intimidating for your customer service rep. And this type of customer can escalate quickly. So how would you deal with this type of customer? Respond promptly to their complaints. Make sure that you're fully listening to them and encourage them to go into detail as to why they're frustrated or what the issue is so using aggression back obviously won't help it will only drag out the process and it can escalate the complaint so this can be very challenging um, especially when you're trying to empathize with them and they're being aggressive with you so instead what you should do is just respond confidently and positively um, and make sure you're informing them of how you're going to resolve the issue and do it as quickly as possible. And then you've got the different type, which is the passive complainer. So what kind of customer is a passive complainer? So not all customers are going to be aggressive and some just never bothered to contact the appropriate person. So some passive complainers um, will take their complaints to, so, to social media to vent their frustration um, from beh behind the screen. So they'll post their complaints to Twitter or Facebook and, or your website if you do have a um, feedback form. So how to deal with this type of customer? Look for Facebook posts and tweets and use that opportunity to resolve it quickly and publicly. So sometimes you may need to also apologize and you know apologize for the inconvenience and offer to fix the problem promptly. So what I notice with when you're on Facebook, sometimes um, they are quite um, personal with their issue. And what I notice with some major companies is you know, they'll say, can you please send me a personal message and we'll rectify the issue for you as soon as possible. So yeah, it's just keeping it professional when you are dealing with complaints over social media, um, because after all, everyone else can see that particular complaint and how you're gonna handle it. Okay, so I've also got the problem solver. So this type of customer just wants to fix the problem and move on. They don't want to waste time going back and forth and it will just lay out what their problem is and they just want a solution straight away. So how to deal this with this type of customer is pretty straightforward. Just tell them exactly how you're going to um, rectify the situation step by step and give them a sense of control over the task. So um, I guess it's going back to that tofu method where you are taking ownership and following up to make sure that the solution has been rectified and that they're happy with that solution. 
Okay, and lastly, we've got the entitled customer. So what is an entitled customer? That usually means when they'll keep repeating the same demand, no matter what the customer service response is. Um, so I guess with this type of customer, you just need to make sure the customer service representative um, just knows all the available solutions um, front to back. And rem sorry, um, just make sure that with the customer, you're avoiding um, getting sucked into never ending conversations and that cycle. Um, don't be aggressive as well, because no one will win. And it's just basically laying out the final options with that customer and um, finding out, you know, whether they want a discount on a future order, whether they want a replacement or a refund. So there are a few upsides dealing with this particular customer. Um, listen to what they want and look for patterns. Um, you may find out that this type of customer wants, you know, free shipping or they want a product upgrade or they just simply want something for nothing. So I guess that's just more listening to their needs and maybe the product isn't suitable for them and you need to um, offer an alternative solution. So think about the ang angry customers that you've come across with in your work. What type of customers were they? And what kind of um, methods or solutions have you done to deal with this type of customer? Okay, so the last part of this webinar is basically just tips on what to say and what not to say when you are dealing with an upset customer. So let's start off with the first one. Okay, so don't say, I don't know when you are dealing with an upset customer. Instead, what you should say is, that's a good question, insert name. Let me check and find out for you. So what I usually find is um, a great customer service rep representative, um, they build a rapport where they actually use your name, um, just so you're addressing, um, sorry, you're building a connection with that customer and making it personal, um, just so they know that you are wanting to help them. Tick. Okay, so what not to say? Don't say, please calm down. That will only aggravate the customer more. Um, that's. And what you should say instead is, I understand your concern. Um, what we will do is resolve your, try and resolve your issue. So I guess with saying that, um, make sure you don't say, I understand how you're feeling, because then an upset customer is just a, an emotional response for them. So what they'll usually say is, you don't know what I'm going through or something like that. So just don't say, I understand how you're feeling, because um, then they'll just, um, they might retaliate and say, no, you don't. Um, so it's just saying, I understand your concern. So that's just more um, letting them know you understand that they are frustrated. Okay, so what not to say again? Don't say, hang on, I'll be right back. Instead, say, it may, me, it may take me a minute or so to find out for you, or you can say, it may take me a moment to find out for you. Please stay on the line while I check, or um, please give me a moment while I check, if you're face to face. And don't respond with no um, when you are responding to upset customers. Instead, say, Oops, sorry, I accidentally put it there, but just say, unfortunately, weren't able to do that, but let me look into another option that will work for you. So, yeah, just make sure these are just basically the do's and don'ts of what to say and what not to say. So, just bring it all together again. So, what we went through is the customer service mindset. So, the end goal is making sure that you want to help your customer and that is part of your role. So 
when you are responding to an upset customer, don't think that that don't take it personally that they are, you know, um, they're trying to upset you. Um, I guess it's just they're frustrated um, at their problem of the product or service and you're only trying to help them. Again, after that customer service mindset is using that diffuse method. So go through those steps when you are dealing with an upset customer um, just to help you with your response. And then going through the types of customer is basically understanding the types, sorry, the type of customer that's upset and it'll help you how you want to respond to them. So eventually with all this, these points, it's, it should help you um, improve your customer service skills, hopefully. And hopefully it does also build on your resilience and your confidence on how to handle um, upset customers. So I'll just basically hand it back to Charlotte to see if there's any questions for this webinar. Thank you, Andrea. Thanks so much for the presentation. Uh, there haven't been any questions submitted. I'm not sure if anyone would like to submit something now while we have a few minutes. Uh, we'll just wait on the line here. Um, Andrea, we have received one question. Um, is it the same process if my business deals with customers via Facebook chat as opposed to a post? Yeah, exactly. So when you are on Facebook chat, um, are you talking about the diffuse method? Is that what you mean? Or when you're talking, I mean, when you're dealing with a complaint on Facebook posts? I believe it's a complaint on the chat system there. Yeah, so I guess it's just, um, you know, listening to what the, what the issue is um, and just being professional. Use that positive language again that you're trying to help them and just looking into the issue and resolving it for them and finding an alternative solution. Okay, thanks. Another question. Looking for some assistance with non-paying customers, such as debt collection type conversations. Any advice would be greatly appreciated. Not sure if that's something we could take offline or? Debt collection. Oh, that's a good question. Um, let me get back to that customer. Oh, sorry, customer. I'm thinking about customers. Um, that attendee, and I'll email them a personal um, response. Okay, that's great. Uh, there haven't been any other questions, so I think we might end the session there. Um, thanks so much, everyone, for attending. A recording of today's session and the presentation slides will be available on our Reckon Training Academy. Uh, if you have any queries trying to access that, you can email us at training at .com and we'll send you a link. Thanks again, and thanks, Andrea, for presenting. Perfect. Thank you, everyone. What was yeah. that?